Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we are very glad to be here at Nurse Summit today to tell you about this great story uh, of the Raider of the Lost CICD and their quest to, uh, for the uh, inner source grail. So uh, I'm uh, Mathieu, uh, I'm a tech advocate at Superstaria, a European uh, from service company. As you can hear from my lovely accent, I'm from France. Uh, here I have some detail about me regarding my activities. I'm working with GitLab, at 2 devops and you can follow me on these nice handles, but we are not here today to talk about me. So let's start the story. Just a quick disclaimer. Uh, we will do our demo and explanation uh, about Golang, GoLanguage and GitLab platform, just because we love Gophers and Tanukis. But all that we will explain today can be easily applied to any other programming languages or in other platforms such as GitHub for sure. So let's go for the story. At the beginning of the story, we have a lonely rider. Uh, that he's working uh, on his uh, project alone on his side. And this lonely rider today is Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. I'm Thomas Bonny. I'm CTO and co-founder at uh, Air2 DevOps. I, I've done uh, plenty of CICD pipeline. And today, I can say that CICD pipeline are at the same time my dream and my nightmares. I will explain just after what is CICD pipeline. Today, I'm, as Mathieu said, I'm a lonely raider working alone on my Go API project. I work on this project and each time I need to release this, uh, my new version of, of, of my code, I need to manually test my code, uh, be sure that there is no security issue, uh, build my code, deploy it on, uh, on the server. But I'm a lazy adventurer. I love to go in, in new adventure, but I don't want to go again and again to the same one. So in order to fix this problem, I've built what we name a CICD pipeline on GitHub. CICD stands for Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment. And you can see on the picture on the right part of my screen, a pipeline on GitLab. This pipeline is triggered each time I publish a new version of my code. You can see two blocks, first test and build. First block are named stages, and each stage starts. All the steps inside the stages are named jobs. They are, run, they are started at the same time, at the beginning of the stage, and each of them run independently. For example, here, each time I push my code, the stage test starts, and several jobs start. Uh, one job that lint my Docker file, one job that check my Go dependency, and so on. If everything is good, everything is green, we go to the next uh, stage, which is build, and that build my uh, container image. So this is what my pipeline look like. And on the left, uh, you can see what uh, my pipeline configuration look like. So if you are on GitLab, you just need to create a file .gitlab-ci.yml and write this kind of, uh, of configuration to create your pipeline. So here, I have first a stage list, stages list with test and build. You can have as many stages as, as you want. And then I, I have all the job of the pipeline. You can name the job as you want. And inside each job, you have plenty of keywords uh, bring by GitLab. Uh, on the slide, you will have the link to GitLab documentation to know all keyword available. But here I use only the mandatory, the main one, uh, stage to say, to declare in what stage the job should run, image that, uh, that specify, because each job are run inside a container. And uh, I need to specify a container image to uh, start the job. And then the script part, it's uh, a list of uh, CLI command to effectively run the job. So here, for example, the CLI run a, a check of my Go dependencies. So I build my pipeline. It works super nice. And uh, the first thing I do after that is to go to see my colleague, Mathieu, to show him the amazing pipeline I just built. Okay, Thomas, this looks like a very nice job. Uh, but maybe I have an idea because it seems that it's a very static approach you have and I'm pretty sure that 
Other projects in Go should have the same needs to build some pipeline. Have you heard about the GitLab uh, CI components? I know it's quite a new feature, uh, but it's really interesting approach to build some reusable job like the GitHub action on GitHub, for instance. It is very easily extensible. You can version them. You can also document them so that everyone can understand what your job is doing. And you can even test them. I know you don't like test, but test is not doing. You have to test sometimes. And with the uh, component, you can do that. A quick sample of that is, as you can see in, in this one, is that it's very close to your declaration of the job that you have in your previous pipeline. But you can add some inputs into your, your job so that everyone can easily customize your job to fit their need regarding their project. So this is the same way you are doing, but with a more flexible approach so that everyone can maybe reuse uh, your job and your good job, uh, the good job you've done on your project. What do you think about that? Maybe it can be interesting for your project. It's amazing. It, thanks a lot, Mathieu. I didn't know about this. It's a super nice idea, and I will use it for my project. Instead of having hundred of uh, CICD of hard coded uh, YAML line, I will just pick raisable component that you publish on the that you publish. And so, I've migrated my my project, and here you can see the result. Instead of having all this. Um, uh, super hard to maintain YAML line. I have a super simple uh, reference to component with version and uh, even with uh, variable to, to adapt the components to, to, to my specific need. Let's look on so now. Yes, thanks for that. And so now, Mathieu, our uh, both projects are great. We have well, both of us, super nice pipeline. But look around us. Around us, in our company, it's a chaos of hard coded and dead pipeline. We need to help I everyone. I know. I have maybe an idea. Um, there is a GitLab native CIC catalog. It's a feature inside GitLab where you have a dashboard to view all the components that are available on the platform. It's quite easy to use. It's an overview of uh, all, uh, all the components. You can see what are the jobs that they are contained with this component. So it can be an idea, but I, I don't know if it's the right one because it's not that clear for me. Uh, because, for instance, on GitLab.com, you have hundreds of components. How do I know which are the good ones that I should use for my project? I don't know which are the ones that maybe might be certified by my organization, which are the ones that are used by other projects so that I am sure they are mature enough for me to be reused. And you know Aurelien, our security officer. I'm pretty sure he won't like this approach to have some very open uh, job running into our um, enterprise pipeline. So I don't know about your feeling, but I'm not sure this is the right uh, approach for our CIC catalog that we want to put into the company. I think you're right. It's it's a good start, but what we need is really the perfect uh, um, the perfect uh, product to use uh, to have our CIC component catalog scoped to our, co our company in order to have an inner source approach on it. So first, uh, world is vast, and we need a place dedicated to our company to allow our colleague to easily find components really dedicated to their need, to our co internal company process, and uh, to be able to contribute on them. And second, as component maintainer, both of us, we need to have uh, more observability uh, to see metrics, to see who are using our component and how. And in order to do this, um, I can show you quickly how to use uh, uh, the free part of uh, product R2 DevOps uh, to achieve this two goal. So basically, inside our company, I've uh, imported all the components you've built, Mathieu, and everyone, each of our colleagues can connect with our GitLab account and access the list of the component. And for each component, there is a documentation, uh, easy way to copy past inside uh, their GitLab project to use the component by reference, uh, all the version available. We have the code, the change log. And in order to allow them to contribute easily, we have a link to the repository to directly uh, uh, 
create a branch and, and make a, a merge request and as well a link to issue to easily open an issue if something wrong with the component. So this is for the first part, um, making available all the components to the company. And for the second part, for both of us, Mathieu as a component maintainer, we needed to track the usage. Uh, here, we can do it by having the list of all components uh, by name and seeing what project in the company are using them. And for each project, uh, what version is used and if it's outdated or not. OK, great. So if I understand well this platform, it's easy to see what are the right components for my project to be used and that are the ones that are certified by the company. And for Aurelien needs uh, as a security officer, he can easily see what are the bad students of the project that are not using the right version and the right component uh, of the project so that they can, can go and see them to, to tackle them. So that's quite an uh, interesting one. Yeah. Am I right on this? Exactly. Topic? You're totally right. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Great. So uh, we have now finished our story for, for today. We reached a pretty good uh, level of inner source sharing of CSD components in our company. So the moral of the story now. First, why the inner source approach is important for CICD. Uh, CICD pipeline now are really the spine of the security and delivery in all software company. It's a really complex field requiring extensive knowledge in different tools and usage. It's super time consuming, super hard to maintain. It evolves fast and prone to uh, a lot of security breach. And for the next year, Gartner predicts that almost half of the company worldwide will suffer a supply chain attack. So inner source uh, is really a great solution to allow in, inside the company to allow everyone uh, to set up a secured CICD pipeline in a minute. OK, the 45% is quite frightening, but we have to, yeah. to do something about that. OK, thank you. So but maybe we can learn more than just for CICD regarding an inner source strategy and how we can make it successful. First, if you see some duplication within your company into the CICD, but maybe also into the application, this should be an alert sign for you. Duplication is bad for the company. So we will have to do something about this. And inner source is a good strategy to tackle that. Sharing is easy. It's very easy to say, OK, I've done a good job on this part and so on. Very, very easy and fast. But the reuse is very complicated. How I make other people reuse my component and my application and so on. So to do that, some few uh, clues that we may uh, try to share with you today. Think uh, extensibility and customizable. We, the project has specific needs. So the magic component that fit all the project doesn't exist at all. It has to be extensible so that if I want to reuse something, I have to be able to adapt it to my context. Also, think the right scope, the right size of your component. If the component is too small, not enough value, I will lose more time to try to integrate it than to do it on my own. And too big, it may be too complex to integrate, maybe too scary also to onboard on such a big part. So I may, may say, oh, I maybe not don't need everything and so on. So I can be aware. So think the right scope. Of course, document clearly all that is included within your um, component so that I can understand as an end user what I will be able to um, use from your component, what are the features, and so on. Very important part also is to measure the usage. Uh, measure to know if you are sharing right. Because you can share, as I was explaining clearly, easily, but if nobody is reusing your component, that's bad. Maybe because it's not that clear, maybe it's too small, too big. So you have to rethink what is the right level of each thing. And by measuring the usage, you, you are now able to see what are your maturity running the inner store strategy you have internally. And of course, as Thomas said, CICD can be an easy way to initialize your inner source program because CICD is now the backbone of most the, of the system uh, in all the companies. So it's a central point of all the companies. So inner source program is a central program also. So the CICD makes sense to have this inner source approach a good start. We are right on time. Uh, thank you for your attention. The slides are already online if you want to have a look at them. The demo are also online. If you want to reach uh, Toama and I, we are on the Slack, of course, but you can also reach us on X or uh, Blue Sky. And the QR code is for an open feedback. If you want to give us some feedback on this talk, 
we build more than I'm glad to have your feedback on this part. And now we have time for some questions. 